much for joining me. I'm so happy to be back here with you today. I'm going to be sharing a couple of cards that I created doing some watercoloring on craft cardstock. Now, I'm sure many of you have craft cardstock in your crafting stash. It's not a product I use all the time. I have to feel in the mood for it, but I really felt the mood for it for this particular project. And I'm going to be featuring this technique with a couple of my favorite new Neat and Tangled stamps. Craft cardstock and cardstock in general is not technically meant to be watercolored on. The paper will start to pill when it has too much water on it. However, I'm going to be sharing a couple of ways that you can create the look of watercoloring on your craft cardstocks really easily and you won't have that pilling of the paper. So here I've got a piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock. This is a 100 pound cardstock. I've also got some Dina Wakely Gesso. This is a clear color. We want to make sure that we use clear because we want to see the craft color through the gesso. Now the gesso is going to create a barrier between the watercoloring and the paper itself. And that's going to allow us to do watercoloring on top of this paper and not have to worry about it pilling. Now I'm also going to share with you another way on how you can do the watercoloring with the craft card stock without the gesso. And I'll share that in a couple minutes, but I want to show you the gesso first because I find this technique is really, really helpful. So after I applied the gesso and I let it dry for a little bit, I'm now going ahead and stamping some of the maple leaves onto the cardstock. I'm using dye ink here and this should dry pretty quickly on your craft cardstock. However, I went ahead and heat set this just to make sure because I didn't want the water that we're going to start adding to this to reactivate the ink and cause any bleeding. If you use a more permanent ink, you won't have to worry about any of the ink being wet on the surface of this paper. So after I've stamped the leaves, I'm now going to start adding in some of my watercolor. I'm using Prima's, I'm using Prima's watercolor confections watercolors. I'm using a variety of colors from a few of their different palettes. I'll have them linked in the video description. I'm just adding color very randomly across these pieces of paper, just trying to create the look of watercolored leaves and really add that really nice variation to the colors. Now, because it's on gesso, it's not soaking into the paper because there's that barrier. So the watercolor is going to dry on top of the gesso and it's going to have a much more vibrant look. I'll show you the slight variation that there is when you watercolor directly onto the cardstock rather than coloring on the gesso. But I find both techniques are really funny. You get really beautiful results from both. So don't feel like you have to have the gesso, but I wanted to show you this in case you like the results of the gesso or if you have it yourself. So I'm going to continue adding color to this panel here that has the gesso underneath the leaves until I have the leaves completely colored in. I'm being very random with the mixing of the colors because leaves in general, when you look at them, have a lot of variation in the colors. So I'm dropping different colors in and I'm really dropping colors that really shouldn't be mixed together, like green with red. It's going to create brown, but when you look at a leaf, you do see areas of brown on the leaf because they are dying. So I wanted to be able to capture that realistic effect as I'm dropping color in and allowing the colors to kind of mix and get a little muddy looking. I think this really adds to the autumn feel and really creates a more realistic appearance to these leaves. I colored quite a few of these panels just to kind of play around with the technique and see how it looks. I didn't use all of them on my cards. Now these two in particular here, I did not watercolor with gesso on the two on the left. The two on the right have the gesso applied to the paper first and the two on the left do not. The two on the left I painted directly onto the cardstock itself with the watercolor. As you're looking at these leaves, you're seeing that the pigment on the paper is very intense. and That's because we used very little water. I used mostly watercolor pigment itself on the two on the left. The two on the right have a little bit more water because we had the gesso barrier and that allowed me to be able to use more water to get the colors to blend. But I think both turned out really, really great. And you can create that same look on your cardstocks as just as easily. So just remember that when you're watercoloring onto paper that doesn't have the gesso applied to it, you want to make sure that you don't use much water because that's going to allow you to create that beautiful look and not have any paper pilling. So now I'm taking my water brush and I'm picking up some brown watercolor from that Prima watercolor set and I'm flicking it all over these papers. I love the look of splatters and I think this really adds to the natural feel of these cards. So I wanted to go ahead and add those in. Next, I want to start creating my card bases. 
So I'm taking some pieces of some ivory cardstock from Simon's stamp, and I've got some card bases that are cut slightly larger than these panels. Now you'll notice I have layers of cardstock, the ivory cardstock, behind my watercolor panels. That not only prevents the paper from having a warped appearance, but also gives me just a tiny bit of dimension off of the card base. I didn't want to use foam tape. I wanted it to be a little bit more flatter, but I didn't want it to be flat against the card. So I'll show you how I did this. I just took my watercolored panel and I'm adding ATG adhesive to the back side of this panel. I'm going to cover this completely, making sure I get the adhesive really close to the edges because this is going to be layered up with other pieces of cardstock cut to the same size. Once I've applied the adhesive, I'm going to take one of these little squares that I've cut to be the same size as my watercolor panels, and I'm going to layer these on top of each other to create a second layer. This is going to give me slight dimension off of my card base and allow me to create a more dimensional appearance. I'm going to add ATG adhesive to the back side of that panel, and then I'll go ahead and attach it down to the second panel that I've created from the ivory cardstock. So now basically I have a total of three layers of cardstock stacked on top of each other and that creates dimension off of my card base because I'll be able to attach this directly onto my card base which is a square that's cut slightly larger than this watercolor panel and that will allow me to get that really nice dimension but also not make it quite so bulky as if I had used foam tape. So here I'm going ahead and adding ATG adhesive to the back side of that entire stack and I'll go ahead and pop this up onto my card. So here's a look at the two cards side by side. Again, the one on the left is the one without the gesso and the one on the right is the one that we used with the gesso. So next it's time to start building my cards. I wanted to use the Neat and Tangled Journaling Alpha dies. These are some of my favorite alphabet dies. I really love the nice thin font of these and they work on any card design. I really love using these. So I'm gonna line these up onto a piece of painter's tape no reason in particular other than it's going to allow me to hold the dies in place as I run them through my Big Shot machine and also keep them all together. So that way I can cut them all in one big pass and not have to worry about cutting lots of little tiny pieces and lining them up onto paper. The card stocks I'm using are some yellow from Basil and also a burnt orange color from Simon's Stamp. After I die cut those letters that spelled out the word thanks, I cut it three times from each color of card stock. And now I'm adding liquid adhesive to each letter and stacking them on top of each other to create dimensional letters. This almost reminds you of those thickers, which I think are from American Crafts. They're those nice little thick alphabet stickers and it reminds me of the same type of concept. However, I like something like this better because it allows me to get a more custom look. I'm going to layer, again, three of these on top of each other to create the dimension. You can create these as tall or as thin as you'd like. You could do just one layer or you could do anywhere between three and five, six. Basically, however tall you want it to be, definitely it's your choice. So I really like the customization of these letters and how you can create some really nice embellishments. So here's a look at the letter all finished. You can see it's all put together and I've got some really nice dimension. You can see the thickness here. I really like this. And I'll go ahead and do this for all of these letters. It took me quite a bit of time, but I did put them all together. And here you can see I have them ready to go and attach down onto my card. Now I want these to be layered up nice and evenly across my card panel. So I'm taking a ruler here. This is my Tim Holtz ruler. It's got a nice thin edge along the side there. And I'm going to lay this down onto my card base. I've lined it up along the general central area of the card. I'm going to have a little banner going across the bottom portion underneath the word thank. And as I'm applying these letters down, I'm making sure I have them butted up against the edge of that ruler, just again to make sure that they're lined up nice and straight. I'll go ahead and glue these all together onto my card. And then once I have them laid down, I also took a clear block and just put this on top of the die cut letters to help them hold down onto the cardstock and bond to the paper a little more easily. I'll go ahead and then repeat the same process for the second card, adding liquid glue to the back side of each letter and then attaching it down onto the card. Okay, so here's my sentiment that I stamped from the Into the Woods stamp set, and I used one of the other card stock colors that I used for the other card to create the sentiment banner that goes across my card base. So for the card that I used the orange for the letters, I used the yellow for the banner that goes underneath, and then vice versa for the card that uses the yellow letters, I used an orange panel that goes across the card. And now I'm attaching some beautiful sequins. These are a nice green color that I thought matched the leaves on my cards. And that finished off these cards.
So I hope you've enjoyed and got some inspiration on creating some beautiful watercolored results on craft cardstock. You can do this process on any types of cardstocks. I recommend using a cardstock that is at least 100 pounds because it does help to have a little bit thicker. However, you can do the same type of process on 80 pound cardstock as well. You might have a bit more pilling on the paper that doesn't end up having any gesso on it if you use 80 pound cardstock because it will be able to not take as much water. So keep that in mind as you experiment. I definitely encourage you to go ahead and try it out on some scrap pieces of paper just to kind of get the feel of how it works. This is what I did. You can see a couple of my test pieces along the edges of my pictures here. I really like being able to play around with this and kind of get a feel for how the paper is working with my watercolors before I actually use it on an actual project. And again, if you want to try this with gesso, I recommend using the Dina Wakely gesso because it's clear, but any type of other clear gesso that you might have on hand would work just as well. You just want to make sure it's clear because you're going to be able to see through to the craft card stock on the other side. So I hope this has inspired you and helped you out with some fun watercoloring techniques and hopefully will help you stretch your stash. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and head on over to the Neat and Tangle blog where you can get more information on these cards. If you enjoyed this video, here's another one you might like featuring Neat and Tangled exclusive products. Please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you can connect with me on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, as well as my blog. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you again soon.